Hello everyone, uh, <coughs> welcome back to the lecture number 5 of Autonomy Manufacturing Processes and Technology. Uh, during the last lecture, that is lecture number 4, we were discussing about uh, the bar drawing and the wire drawing and the tube drawing. Uh, we had completed uh, our uh, bar drawing kind of uh, bar drawing topic uh, and <coughs> this <coughs> wire drawing was left in middle. So let us uh, begin with this uh, remaining topic. So, <clears throat> last time we had discussed uh, that uh, in your convergible die, uh, you are going to pass your wire, uh, your specimen and then it will be converted to a very thin wire. And any in individual pass, it completes only 20 to 30% reduction. So, more number of progressive dies are been used and it has to pass through it. So, wire drawing is a process which depends on three aspects. Uh, first is uh, re reduction ratio, you need to take care of that. You need to take care of die angle and the third one is the friction so seeing in the diagram you can see there are some terminologies nomenclature has been available to you and depending on that nomenclature uh, you can have calculate the percentage reduction of the area so that is AO minus AF by AO okay so AO is basically the initial area and AF is the final area of your wire which you are that is the specimen now, improper control of these parameters uh, can generate defects in your uh, material and defects such as center cracking may start. Okay. So, center crack can occur due to the large die angle. If let us say your end angle is not proper, then there will be lower reduction per pass. There will be friction will be uh, available to you. Okay. So, center cracking may also start. Okay. Then, second one is the seams. Seams are the longitudinal scratches and folds in the material. That is, uh, it will start scratching uh, if your die angle is not proper. Okay, or if any kind of other defect is there, then uh, if any, any parameter is not proper, then these two major defect uh, may start. Okay. The third category of the drawing is the tube drawing. So the hollow tube uh, has been drawn through the die. Okay, generally uh, there are different uh, plugs or mandrels. So both are one and the same thing. Uh, in different books, you will find with the different name. Okay, so the hollow tube is drawn into the die uh, uh, to support the inside diameter of the tube. There will be a mandrel or plug available. This process is called as your tube drawing. <coughs> so what is the use of this mandrel or plug? here is to affect the wall reduction and to control the size of the hole okay so this the the hole the bore which is available to us to control that you require to have uh, the plug okay, or mandrel okay. uh, in some of the cases uh, mandrel may be omitted okay if not necessary if uh, your wall thickness is not of much importance or the reduction in the diameter is not of much importance or the uh, final specification are not important then at that point of time you can omit uh, these things also this uh, plugs and minerals so when you are doing that thing uh, those that kind of uh, tube drawing is called as tube sinking okay so if you see here in the diagram nothing has been employed uh, in the center part here okay so this kind of process is called as your tube sinking next category is your uh, of tube drawing is your fixed plug where a stationary plug uh, is been used uh, here you can see there is one stationary plug is available here okay. uh, this one is the oldest method uh, the smooth internal diameter surface will be provided in a very less amount of time and in the straight lengths will be maintained okay. uh, in tubes over the stationary mandrel uh, the maximum practical sectional reduction does not exceed 40 percent per pass okay. uh, you had seen that in a wire drawing when a uh, when a workpiece passes through a dryer there will be reduction in 25 to 30 percent of the size of the one pass uh, here similarly uh, during initial pass or during the fixed plug that is the stationary mental uh, you will only get 40 percent of pass uh, if you change that uh, uh, stationary mental or stationary plug to the movable plug or movable mandrel or floating mandrel then that 40 percent can be done to the 45 percent okay for the same reduction of the drawing okay so, so this kind of uh, when this kind of uh, method has been utilized it is called as the floating tube okay so 
fixed plug is where a fixed kind of uh, mandrel or plug is been used and floating me plug means uh, the float kind of plug will be used and there will be difference <coughs> in the reduction ratios the last category of the tube drawing is a rod drawing where a rod is been inserted okay and uh, in the both previous two uh, fixed plug and the movable plug a floating plug uh, lubrication and tool design was of very much importance okay so problems related to the friction are minimized by using long mental there because uh, more number of contact surfaces were available so frictions a uh, friction force uh, friction heat uh, will be more there uh, so that problem has been reduced here so the mental consists of a hard rod that extends over the entire length here okay and the area reduction can be 50 percent which is the highest here so after drawing the mandrel must be removed from the tube by rolling which increases the tube diameter slightly <laughs> and disturbs the <laughs> tolerance sorry rod drawing provides uh, less friction and uh, lower drawing forces are uh, being utilized and uh, the other plug drawing operations okay so whether it is a floating plug or the fixed plug kind of operation the friction force which is being generated here is very much less and the reduction in the area is the highest here it gets 50 percent so seeing in the diagram here uh, you can see the first category is the tube sinking okay where nothing is available so this is this is your work piece this is hollow from the center it is a tube that's why it is hollow it has been pulled in this direction okay second one is a fixed plug this one is a fixed plug or fixed mandrel third one is your floating one and the last one is your rod drawing that is your rod okay it is also called as a mandrel you can call it as a mandrel but it is basically a rod okay which generate which is throughout the length okay here it is not shown but it it has to be throughout the length okay. next uh, uh, operation of uh, stamping is uh, your bending so bending of uh, sheets and plates are been widely done in big and small industries okay. so you can create flanges with it uh, you can create corrugations corrugated surfaces with it there are different applications of bending so sheet metal is subjected to the bending stress in which a flat sheet is made into the curved sheet so here in the diagram you also you can see that punch has been used a v-shaped punch has been used okay and it is been applying force uh, so that it can be your workpiece can be generated in the particular shape okay so here it is in v-shape so it is called as your v bending so if the sheet is bent on the edge uh, using a wiping die it is called as your edge bending this is what the second type of uh, bending process you can uh, utilize uh, where uh, here in this process there is a cantilever holding you can see uh, this is a cantilever holding of your plate or in plank okay and then there is a uh, there is a pressure uh, pad is available this fh is that holder uh, blank holder or you can say pressure pad which is applying pressure here okay and this v uh, this 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 component is called as the punch okay so a cantilever holding is been done and uh, it is between the die and your blank holder and then from the top the punch is uh, applying the force okay so this is what is called as the edge bending so it is edge bending is done so that you can uh, get 90 degree of your bending okay. now during bending process what actually happens is uh, uh, during the bending here you can see this this dotted line is a neutral axis okay. so during bending the material which is outwards of the neutral axis that is the top surface here or you can say this area okay it is subjected to the tensile stress and the inner area that is this one you can see this one inner side this area it is under your compressive stress because here grains are grouping with each other whereas in the top one they are expanding they are stretching okay so this area outer area is under tensile uh, stress this area is under compressive stress so there are two different kind of stresses are being applied on, <coughs> on the same part then there is a bend radius inside the bending okay uh, uh, which is uh, this thing is called as your bend radius 
and the neutral axis remain at the center of the thickness of the sheet for elastic bending okay whenever if you are going for elastic bending at that point of time your neutral axis remains at the center of the thickness but as you go on to the plastic bending the neutral axis shift towards the inside of the band okay so once you go for plastic bending kind of thing uh, the uh, yeah, the neutral axis it will shift inwards okay so the rate of elongation of outer fibers is greater than the contraction of the inner fibers okay so this is again the most important thing the outer fibers that is the fibers which are uh, on the outside which are in a tensile load those fibers the rate of elongation will be very much uh, high as compared to the contraction of the inner fibers here the compressive stress is applied on the outer inner side tensile stress is available on the outer side but this elongation which is due to the tensile stress will be higher as compared to the contraction which is taking place here on the inner side therefore the thickness reduction at the band section okay so there will be the reduction in the overall thickness as compared to the other part other section of the material okay because there are two different types of loads are acting on this band area okay so these are some of the things for your bending tube bending okay next process is coining uh, coining is a similar uh, kind of bending process uh, similar to the bending process uh, it is done between again a punch and die but here the uh, the <coughs> you can say the contact between the punch is very high uh, it goes very deep in your workpiece and that's why it is uh, used as a final product a final machining operation sometimes in some of the applications okay so both the punch and the punch uh, uh, tip and the punch actually penetrate in the metal past the neutral axis okay under a high amount of pressure so it will pass the neutral axis what is the neutral axis neutral axis is this okay we had already seen the center axis which is called as the neutral axis so in the coining process your punch will uh, go beyond the neutral axis so coining is a term which comes from manufacturing of the coin is uh, that means all the uh, coins are made of same same size and shape same shape and same kind of structure so similarly all the work pieces which are made by all the same categories uh, uh, sorry not categories all the same uh, specifications <coughs> they uh, with the help of uh, this process that's why they are called as uh, that why this process is called as the coining okay so coin is made exactly the same as that last despite being mass produced okay so every coin is same same in size same in design same is color similarly this process also manufactures all its component same okay so that's why it is given the term name coining so coining was applied to bending method which creates accurate bends consistently okay all the bends which it has been created it is done consistently okay <clears throat> that coining process to manufacture coins is different this is a coining process which is different okay so do not get confused uh, in this so during the coining process the material is put under extreme pressure uh, so that your punch tip may penetrate and it can reach beyond the neutral axis <clears throat> and bend radius formed by the coining is always equal to that of the punch tip okay so the the radius which is applied uh, which is available on the punch tip same radius is been applied on your work piece okay so this is why coining is used rather than a simple bending process so penetration into the metal relieves the internal stresses and eliminates the spring back okay spring back means once you are applying the pressure <coughs> complete metal will not get back to its original shape it will uh, or you can say complete metal will not get deformed let us say if you are even going beyond the plastic deformation <coughs> some amount will get back okay some uh, some amount of metal will get back it will try to get to the original shape okay that is what is called as spring back let us say if you are available with 100 newton of force and you are bending any kind of metal and let us say you have <coughs> the actual uh, uh, movement of the metal you have done by 100 centimeter you require 100 centimeter okay so that movement of 100 centimeter will not be achieved it will since you have pressed you have applied complete 100 newton force uh, it has 
bent to the 100 centimeter but when you remove that force it will come back to its 80 or uh, 80, 80 centimeter or it will come back to 70 centimeter so this gap of the 20 to 30 centimeter is called as the spring back okay uh, this distance you can call is it as uh, sagita distance okay uh, sagita distance which is called as and this sagita distance uh, uh, is called as the spring back okay so it is different for different metals for steel it is different for titanium yes titanium is also cold work uh, basically in automotive industries or uh, in uh, let us say shipping industry titanium is widely used and uh, there also cold working of titanium will take place uh, and there also the spring back comes so in automotive industry also the if you are going for cold working process you will get effect of the spring back you will come to know the spring back okay so this spring back you can remove with the help of coining process by some amount now because of the tonnage requirements wear and tear of the machine will be very much higher because it has to penetrate deep it uh, it has to impose the shape of the punch onto the workpiece okay so the wear and tear will be very much high and there will be few significant advantages to coin bent sheets metal uh, first of which are very high repeatability okay uh, precision and the ability to reduce inner uh, inside radius to small as desired as possible now that depends on your I means you can you can you can embose this uh, radius uh, on the punch and that will be generated so high repeatability and precision is are the two most important things uh, that uh, the which forces the industrialists to uh, select the coining process rather than a simple kind of uh, coining process okay so we end our this lecture here and uh, uh, i hope you understand this thing and if still any kind of diet doubt is available uh, then you can contact me okay feel free to contact me so next topic uh, we'll discuss about rolling so stay tuned with me okay thank you bye bye